Hi, I'm Alexandra Barker. Welcome to Relief Beyond Belief, exploring the world of natural healing. Today my guest is Kelsang Rigdon, who is an ordained Buddhist nun, and Rigdon is going to tell us a little bit about how we can incorporate some of the ideas of Buddhism into our daily lives, regardless of what denomination we might uh, um, be affiliated with. Um, so hi, welcome to the show, Rigdon. Hi, so thank nice you. Thank you could thank come you. today. Yeah, thanks great. for inviting me. Great it's to wonderful. have you here. Great. And, uh, and we, you have a Lam Rin Buddhist Center, um, right. very local, right in downtown Belleville, as mm -hmm. well as a new center in Kingston. That's right, yes. So, and, and your job, you're actually the education coordinator? Yeah, the education program coordinator. And I, I help with the publicity and, and try to um, develop some programs that we're having and teachings in the surrounding area and at the center, along with the resident teacher, Ken Kelsing Tekshin. So I guess we'll just start right at the beginning and just uh, maybe you could give us a bit of an overview about uh, what Buddhism is to begin with and then we can talk about the, yeah. the programs that you do offer. So so it's not something just for Buddhists, this is no. everybody can, can no, use some of these practices. No, because really Buddhism um, is teachings, ancient teachings from you know Buddha Shakyamuni 2600 years ago. So these are the teachings um, um, from Buddha, um, but also it's how to integrate them in our daily lives now, and also how to um, yeah, just basically try to find inner peace. You know, we're all looking for peace. I don't think anybody uh, here really, um, yeah, anybody here really knows how, okay, edit. <laughs> how to achieve that peace. <laughs> we do live in a pretty stressful That's world of being yeah. bombarded with all kinds of things yeah, all the time. Yeah, I think so. everybody's trying to find peace. Yeah. And so Buddhism can help you, give you tools to find it, actually. You know, because um, we offer different programs at our centers and branch classes, you know, from a uh, general program. So what that is, is it's just basically um, introductory meditation to try to calm the mind and make your mind more peaceful. And so to get a taste of inner peace. <laughs> and then we do a, a Dharma teaching or a Dharma talk, which is Buddhist teachings, and, and try to integrate these teachings into our daily life. And basically, it's just understanding our mind more. So that's really what um, Buddhism really entails of, of trying to understand our mind and how to make our, our mind more peaceful. That's and something so we different can all techniques, use. yeah. And your whole order is, is about, you know, coming out of the caves, out of the temples, onto the streets That's right, to teach yeah. everybody because it, there's so much that uh, the Buddhism does have to offer. Yeah. And as I say, it doesn't, it's not a particular, it's more, I guess, a tradition than a specific religion. Mm -hmm. per se. I mean, people of all different religions can use the ideas and benefit Definitely. from them. Anybody who has a mind. <laughs> so if you have a mind, you can use Buddhist teachings because <laughs> it's really just understanding your mind and how to, to bring your mind to more of a peaceful state. And so it, um, using meditation is a beginning, you know, using a breathing meditation can, you know, right away try to help calm our mind. And then using teachings, um, you know, just where actually our, our stress comes from. You know, when we're trying to, when we have a stressful life, we try to look, you know, maybe externally, but um, in fact, when we understand our mind more, we're, we're actually um, creating that stress within our mind. And we're, we're blaming external things, but it's actually our, our internal. Um, so Buddhist teachings will help us try to find, um, yeah, how to identify and recognize our, our, um, the minds that make us kind of worked up and get a little stressed out. So that's kind of the basics of it. So our, our tradition, the New Kadampa tradition, um, has over 800 centers actually all over the world in 35 mm -hmm. countries. So it's, it's actually, like you said, it's made for integrating it um, for everyone in, in cities, in country, you know, in, um, branch classes around, um, but it's it's previously these teachings were only found in a monastery, so you had to go to, you know, maybe Tibet or India and try to understand, usually not in your language, and so these teachings are, are more accessible because they're translated in many different languages as well, oh. and so you can take mm -hmm. up uh, a text and understand it, but it's still it's it's not politically affi affiliated or anything like that either, so it's it's the um, um, pure Dharma teachings from the ancient teachers. So my teacher has taught me what his teacher taught and what his teacher taught. So it's a, a direct lineage right to Buddha Shakyamuni. So it's a pure lineage as well. Well, maybe we could touch on some of those, um, maybe some of the ideas that you would be presenting in a 
a beginner kind of a program with a general practitioner, but sure. I think people might be interested to know the meaning behind your robes. Yes. Maybe you um, could explain a little bit yes, about that. Yes, it all has great meaning, of course. <laughs> um, I have, um, yeah, there's different parts, as you can see, that um, they're called the robes. This is the chigu, so it's, um, you'll see it's kind of made in pieces, so it's to represent when Buddha Shakyamuni, um, you know, understanding that we uh, kind of begging, <laughs> you know, because um, putting a quilt together, like pieces of, of quilt, not just one big fabric, so it's it's um, kind of like a humility, um, like um, humility, but it's also um, used only when we're teaching or receiving teachings or, you know, explaining about teachings, because um, it represents wisdom. Oh. So it's a wisdom, um, uh, wisdom color. Or <laughs> and then underneath is the Zen. So that's actually used when we, when we meditate and when we um, have pujas or chanted prayers. And um, so that's actually to develop our concentration or compassion. So it's um, wisdom and compassion or wisdom and concentration coming together. Um, so those are the outer robes. And then we have yeah, the donka is the top part, and which uh, has many representatives. <laughs> but it's basically when we put it on, it's to remind us, you know, how precious this opportunity is being a human and, you know, just trying to, um, yeah, take the essence of each life. Every moment is, is very, could be the last moment too. <laughs> so yeah. so it, it brings in realizations of, you know, um, how impermanent things are and, you know, things are always changing. So when we put it on, we think of that like the jaws of death, actually. When we put around our neck, you know, that's what representing around there. And and then our the shamdab, which is the skirt part, um, well, there's four folds in it, and it represents the Four Noble Truths of Buddhism. So it's um, um, understanding... Um, we'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's... Yeah, everything has a great meaning. So when we put it on um, every morning, yeah, we try to bring that into our mind because it's actually a great reminder of, um, of the path. And that's personally why I ordained, too, is it's like a big billboard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wherever I go, it's there. <laughs> so you, so it, it you helps do wear these, like on the street, I wherever do. you get groceries, yeah. whatever you're doing. Yeah, I try. It's a great reminder, and especially, you know, when we're in a lineup at the grocery store, you know, it's a, <laughs> and when you're wearing your robes, you're, you're opted to calm down a lot easier because you don't want to get angry and start yelling, <laughs> you know, being impatient, you know. So it's, it helps the mind, actually. It's, it's like a, um, a reminder, yeah, for sure, of, of, of trying to create that inner peace and watch my mind at all times. Now, I know this is fairly new, especially in Belleville. It's only been a few years, isn't it? Yeah, well, Belleville's um, a year ago last September was the first year, was the actual center, but it's going on a couple years before that, before a center um, physically um, was made. Previously, that was at friends' homes and, you know, different places like that. But then there was a strong wish to actually build a center or renovate. Actually, it's in the Community Resource Center. Um, so part of that building with all the other nonprofit organizations, and so um, when it was, um, yeah, when it was moved to a more permanent place, it um, created a lot more interest actually. So more people were able to come, and and we have chanted prayers, and so we have a lot more d activities happening at the same time. Where previously it was just one or two nights a week, um, kind of thing, but we have several different things going on now. So have the, has the local community been receptive? Yes, I, th I think so. There's a strong group um, that's really, uh, I, I guess it's just whether people know about us. That's <laughs> <laughs> but people that know, yeah, they seem to. I think 600 people last year went through between our Kingston location wow. and our Belleville location. And so, yeah, people are getting to know us. And, you know, some people come for a different reason. They just want to learn how to meditate. You know, just want to calm their mind and relax, and it's a very peaceful place to be, so, you know, a lot of people just enjoy the surroundings and the tranquility of it, and <laughs> enjoy that part, and others want to maybe expand on that and study, so that we have study programs as well. Um, so there's a few that's for deeper. that, yeah, so it's, it's open for whatever you wish, you, you know, there's many different ways in, um, we can offer for the community as well. Yeah. Well, coming back to the Four Noble Truths, what, mm -hmm. what exactly are they? Well, when Buddha was um, enlightened, most people may be familiar with it, but just a brief story of when he became enlightened, um, his first teachings were the Four Noble Truths, um, which means uh, true suffering, true origins, 
um, true cessations and true paths. Because B B Buddha originally, you know, he was like a very wealthy yeah, fan, wasn't it? Like a yeah, royalty or something, right. and he had always been protected from old people, sick people, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. was, was really sheltered from that, and then went out into the world, and mm -hmm. I'll let you take it from here because this is more your... <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. He, he went out in the world, he actually, he wanted to investigate more. His, his um, parents wanted to shelter him um, in what was really going on beyond the, the castle walls kind of thing, and, and he was really curious, and when he, he saw that there was you know, a lot of sickness, and there's death, and you know, a lot of things that he never saw. His parents truly tried to, um, you know, try to, yeah, paint a picture for him that was um, maybe a little more glamorous, that was really going on in, in the real world kind of thing. So when he went out, he was really, his compassion just drove him to say, you know, how is this happening? Why is this happening? And, and so he really, you know, tried different routes, actually, um, Roots that um, were a little more um, disciplined of you know not starving himself and that kind of things and he said that's th and then he found out that's way too much um, and so he w went to the middle way he said you know we can find enlightenment um, by still taking care of our body and still taking care of ourselves but really understanding what's going on what's a, what um, how are we living in this world and so that's when he started talking about the four noble truths and true suffering. Uh, when he became enlightened, he um, yeah, really wanted to to share his knowledge. What he what happened? He went through um, several stages of you know towards enlightenment, and so he's just sharing, um, giving some tools of how to find this inner peace. Where we're previously we we're looking you know to shelter you know to put away all our suffering somewhere and, and not looking at it. And so um, yeah, it was really just watching our mind and looking at our mind, understanding our mind where really the suffering's coming from is not from a, out there anymore, it's actually internal. And so that would be the first introductory class that we would give, is really trying to find where our problems come from. You know, where do they really come from? Because if I it's asked so you... so much is manufactured. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Because if I said, um, if you were having a rough day and I said, Alexandra, what are your, what are your problems? What's, what's your problem? <laughs> then uh, most often we'll all say, well, it's because, you know, the car broke down because, you know, the furnace broke and all oh, the kids were driving me crazy, and, you know, the dog chewed up this and, you know, <laughs> this kind of, so we, when our problems arise, we think it's external, um, but actually Buddhist teaching will say actually internally our, our problems arise, so it's looking inward. Good, well we just have to take a short break and sure. then we'll come back and okay. talk about some of the other noble Hi, I'm Alexandra Barker. Welcome back to Relief Beyond Belief. We're speaking with uh, uh, Sain Rigdon, a uh, Buddhist nun, and we were just about to talk about how we can use, uh, how we can mindfully watch our thoughts to create a more peaceful world. So we'll just mm. elaborate a little bit more about that. When you say watching your mind, um, mm. how does one go about doing that? <laughs> well, it is interesting because we're not used to that. <laughs> That's the big step of actually switching our focus to our mind, because usually we just allow our mind to ha thoughts arise and we just react to them. You know, so That's true, yeah. yeah. So if we become angry, for example, we, we don't really watch how the anger develops. We just get angry and react, and so we're not used to actually looking behind the scenes. <laughs> I guess it would be, and uh, and we are when we are suffering, we usually try to distract our mind. You know, we go to sources that you know aren't beneficial, to, you know, <laughs> to try to, you know, maybe even alcohol or drugs or, you know, even watching the TV, yeah, you TV, know, when we're yeah. in, yeah, when we're in pain, fun. that's what we, we try to actually distract it. And so we're actually not very used to looking at our minds. So that's a, that's actually a huge step of, of, um, of these teachings of trying to be more mindful. And so when I, a first class, when people will come in, um, of understanding where to find inner peace, um, usually we look outward, like I just mentioned, about looking externally, trying to create a world that's more peaceful. Um, but we can create all we want, and we're still doesn't mean we're going to be peaceful in our mind, like in our heart. Uh, we're well, because the ego always wants more, yeah. doesn't it? It's never satisfied we're never with whatever satisfied. you've achieved, that's right. <laughs> or whatever you bought, or whatever. Yeah. It's always we're yeah, perfectionists in gremlin. that way. Yeah. <laughs> always wants more. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So. We always want more, and we're always, but we're trying, so that's how we try to, I mean, the advertisers have, 
you know, know oh, our yeah. minds quite well. And so there's always new improved things and there's always, um, you know, better things, you know, or, you know, it's interesting, you know, even cereals have, you know, get a peaceful mind with Zen cereal <laughs> and that kind of stuff, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, it's all really catered to try to look outward to find our peace. And so when we start watching our mind, we actually understand it more. Um, we can find out um, that we don't have to rely on outer things to make our mind peaceful anymore. And so, but we have to begin at the um, at the start, and that's just being mindful. So even the first week, I give homework actually, <laughs> pretty easy homework kind of, but um, profound too, of um, people beginning just coming on um, to the first class, a general program, which is open, just drop in. You don't have to commit to it. You just drop in um, at the location wherever we're teaching it, and yeah, just to actually watch your mind. You know, so when we're uh, being more mindful of what's going on in here. Um, we're actually, it's like when we're being watched, for example, even in the studio, <laughs> we're being watched. <laughs> and so when, you, when you're watching some, when you know you're being watched, you're a little bit more careful of what you're trying to say. You're, you're being a little bit more mindful. So you can actually have that sense. So when we start watching our mind, our mind sometimes isn't as careless because <laughs> Because we're watching it, you know, like there's this, there's this, uh, yeah, alertness going on. Before we just allow our mind to just do whatever it wants, so it's just like having a heyday. <laughs> well, I think a lot, oftentimes people don't even realize the control that they do have. It's just going on That's all the time. Right, it's doing yeah. whatever, you know. We have this internal monologue going on all the time, and mm -hmm. it could be very negative things, or it could be like a very small instance that we can blow up totally out of proportion in That's our mind right, and have yeah. these imaginary conversations and <laughs> everything else yeah. and it's just and really get ourselves quite worked up over fiction you know completely nothing definitely you know, it only exists yeah. in, our, in our mind we get so we're like a um a balloon actually it's a good analogy of yeah. when th good things are good we're blowing over here when things are bad we're blowing over there you know so our mind is actually very unstable you know um generally, unless we actually can try to f um, find peace um, with either uh, bringing meditation, you know, definitely helps. Right. And that's another, <laughs> if yeah, anyone, uh, you know, disagrees with our talking mm. about how, how the mind works, it's try to meditate for five minutes and see <laughs> how, how undisciplined our minds yes. really are. You know, just try to focus on, like yeah. your beginning um, meditation where you focus on the breath, just That's right. the sensation yes. as you breathe in and out and focusing yeah. on that. Yeah, because your mind wants to do something, so you might as well give something to do. So you just allow it to focus right on the tip of your nostrils for every inhalation, exhalation. So, yeah, it just, just wants to, and as it wanders away, you just gently but firmly bring it back. One of the teachers, actually, Kelsey Youngson, who's a, the nun at the Lamrim Center that teaches, she likes the analogy of um, uh, our mind is like a puppy dog. Oh, yeah, Texan. <laughs> I love that one. Because, you know, it's, it's a puppy dog mind. You know, it's, yeah. it's, so we need to train it, actually, to, to, to be more focused and more calm. And, but right now it's just a puppy. So, yeah, when we start to just beginning to watch our mind, we're going to find it very quick and very undisciplined. <laughs> Um, but that's okay. I mean, we've got to start somewhere. And just, but slowly, as we start watching our mind and um, actually start transforming our mind from a more suffering mind, from a more peaceful mind, um, yeah, the puppy dog will be well trained. <laughs> you know, and it will turn into a very true. strong mind. And, and we see that, you know, when, when chaos arises, and we, we see maybe we have someone in our life that um, will see something really tragic go on and they're, they're keeping it together. I wonder, wow, how are they doing that? And it's because actually they have a very strong mind. Um, so you don't have to be Buddhist to have a strong mind to, to bring peace, but, um, but meditation definitely helps in having a, uh, a place to, to have guidance from a teacher and, you know, just trying mm -hmm. to do that. And teaching, so, I mean, Geshe Kelsen Gyatso is uh, the founder of our tradition. He's been very kind, you know, to translate uh, many texts for us from Tibet and, and, and you know, have you know, festivals and, you know, time to meet him and that kind of stuff too. So it is good to have a, a place that you can go to ask questions because reading books, you know, is very difficult to, yeah. to really understand yeah. them. So that's why we offer classes where you, there's discussion as well and um, you can bring up any question you have, you know, that you're having problems with your meditation or, or the teachings itself. So it becomes more clear. We're just trying to make it more simpler. <laughs> yeah. You know, trying to integrate in our own daily lives. Well, and that's uh, 
what I've found, I've been through a few of them with you, and, and I've found that uh, it's true. I mean, it's just putting it into the practice. And when you sort of straighten your mind out, you notice that your external world, you know, yeah. responds in kind and becomes mm. calmer. And, and I mean, stuff still happens, you know, yeah. but depending on your reaction to it, like you can react really strongly and, you know, exacerbate a situation, or you can be calm about it. And mm. yeah, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, you but have the a choice. Work. Yeah, it's a freedom, isn't it? Because it's like a choice. Yeah. Previously, we didn't know we had a choice, so we just allowed whatever mind to arise, and it gets into us into tr tr to trouble. <laughs> we get into trouble over that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's very empowering. Mm -hmm. I think just to make you realize you do have that control, and yeah, so you have lots of different things to offer. What, what are some of the other things in your maybe your beginner's program that you might be other techniques or other ideas yeah. that you would? Well, bringing the teachings for sure. I mean, when we first decide where, where to find inner peace, and when we look internal, then what are we looking for? And so we just allow our mind to arise. Um, you know, when we, when we feel um, a little discomfort, you know, when something happens in our lives, we feel a discomfort, we, we try to check what's going on. And usually, um, well, what we call that's a delusion that arises in our mind. Um, so anything that we feel is that takes away from our inner peace, actually is called a delusion. So we look at what that is, and it could be attachment, or jealousy, hatred, or just not getting what we want, you know, just frustrated with our, um, um, our, our set, our, yeah, we're not, our sad, we're not getting our, um, satisfied. <laughs> You know, and when our wishes aren't satisfied, then <laughs> that's, that's right. when the, the ego gets its back up and kind of goes, wait a minute, yeah. well, I'm more important, I'm the most important person yeah. in the world. <laughs> yeah, and we call that um, our self-cherishing. You know, this I is so strong that we think we're the most important in that situation. And so when we think we're important, um, then everybody else isn't important. <laughs> so we forget about others. Yeah. And that's where we, because not everybody holds that same view. I mean, if we asked everybody, <laughs> you know, who ho held that view, that you're the most important, you know, not too many people are going to agree because <laughs> they think they're important, you know, so there's all these little important people rocking around trying to get what they want, and that's... Mm, we have so, society has so many problems. <laughs> that's right, yeah. If everybody is acting on, on those impulses that... Yeah, and that's, that brings us to the, the prisons that we go and teach to. Oh, that's right, you know, yeah. Th uh, where I was just teaching there yesterday in Millhaven, and one of the guys says, yeah, we were just talking about exactly that, you know, where... Um, we think we're most important, so we'll do anything. But it's the mind that arises, that we think um, that, yes, I have to do this. And so uh, when that happens, we just go along with it. You know, we it's just almost, react to it. Yeah, it's almost like we're, we're the servant and the mind is the master. And That's it's really right. it's really the other way around. Definitely. <laughs> so when we actually control our mind, then we can make choices. And so the guys seem to be very receptive to that idea of actually understanding the mind more and, and learning that we don't have to go with that. You know, for reputation, you know, sometimes we do stuff like that, um, uh, non-virtuous actions, you know, things that are going to cause suffering. Um, and so the guys in prison have a very um, keen, <laughs> keen interest in that. The guys that come to, to the classes anyways, just to see, because they've actually allowed the self-cherishing mind take them too far you know, and, uh, or got caught, <laughs> and yeah. we all have them, uh, the minds, but it's what we do with them, you know, and, and then trying to control that mind of um, jealousy or hatred, and just not allow it to take us to places where we just can't turn back. That's true, yes. because as these things arise, as you're, if you're paying attention, being mindful, watching the mind, and you can kind of notice when it's beginning to happen, and you can mm -hmm. stop it right there, and it's like putting out a little fire as opposed to a raging, out of control forest fire. That's right. You know, you, yeah. can, <laughs> <laughs> you stop it as soon as you notice, and you go, hmm, okay, what's going to happen yeah. if I follow this line of thinking? Is it going to make me happy? Is it going to make everyone around me happy? Or yeah. is it going to make everybody miserable? Yeah. So those are kind of some good guidelines that you know, I've learned from you guys, so I'm just... That's <laughs> right, great, you learned very well. <laughs> <laughs> and they yeah. work, you know, that's, yeah. that's the really... Well, I think that's the key. It sounds so simple, but that's the beauty of it. Yeah, I think that's the key of actually integrating into our own lives, because we can't, you know, as a teacher, we can't just say, okay, here's some inner peace, and just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's actually, um, and that's how a Buddha Shakyamuni is viewed as, as like a doctor, you know, and, and the teachings are like a prescription. 
But if we have the prescription sitting beside on the table beside our bed and we don't take it, it's not going to help us, actually. We can intellectually know how good it is. Yeah. We can intellectually say, yes, that's the perfect, you know, remedy. <laughs>